Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to another video. Thank you so much for taking the time to log on and join me today. Today's topic is one that is super interesting and I feel like it's one that if you can nail this and put this learning into place, it's going to make weight loss, maintenance, so much easier and that is of course portion control. Once you've nailed portion control every single thing seems to fall into place because you're eating really well but you're also eating really realistically for the goals that you want to achieve. So I have 10 tips here about how to nail portion control and just some tips about what you can be mindful of and this is going to again help you to at least maintain your weight if not lose weight. So depending on how you do things will impact the result but I use these whilst losing weight and I also use them now whilst maintaining. So the first one is try where you can to eat less processed foods. Not all the time, I understand that convenience food um, is part of everyone's life, it's part of everyone's routine, but where you can dedicate that time to eat organic or eat free range or eat wholesome, home cooked, less processed foods, the better. Um, it will really aid a weight loss because you know exactly what's going into them. Again, it's that whole area of fake food. If you prepare the food, you know exactly what is in it, so you're more informed, you're more educated. It's better for you, it's better for your body, it's better for your metabolism. There are so many benefits to eating really wholesome foods that are less processed. Again, I realise that it's not always possible and you are going to opt for convenience food and you are going to opt for things that are, you know, are processed, as I do myself from time to time. But as a general rule, if you could try to be really mindful, prioritise foods that are not processed and that would be fantastic and will really aid um, the results that you want to achieve. So that is definitely number one and again, really important in regards to weight loss. If I'm looking down, it's because I've made notes. The next one, and this is so important guys, not only for weight loss but also for maintenance and just generally for your overall health, and that is do not skip meals. It's really easy to skip breakfast, it's really easy when you're really busy to skip lunch and just to focus on your dinner. But actually, your body needs to function throughout the day, it needs to have food and energy to perform the way it should, to make you think better, to make your mental health better. You need to make sure that you're eating regularly and skipping meals is not the way to go because your body will store fat, it will store the foods, it will make you constipated, it will make you bloated and it's just not fantastic. You want constant digestion, you want your body to be working, you want your body to be doing exactly as it should and giving it that, those food, vitamins and minerals is a really important way to make sure that your body is running harmoniously and then of course your mind as well. So don't skip meals. Um, it's really important. I know it can be tempting sometimes when we're busy or you might think that eating less will promote a weight loss. It's not always the case. Um, just prioritise again, wholesome foods where you can, less processed breakfast, fruit, yoghurt, berries, nuts, things like that. Um, if you can't really stomach a lot in the morning, just try having really lighter options. Um, no one's telling you to have like, you know, bacon and eggs, have something like fruit, yogurt, you know, things like that. Just stuff to waken your body up. You guys will know this from my what I eat in a day is I never skip breakfast where I can. So make sure you do that. And another side note to this is to make sure that you're not eating at least two hours before you go to bed. Um, I always have fruit every single night, but I make sure it's at least two hours before I'm going to sleep because obviously if you eat closer to going to bed, you're not burning anything off and it lies in your stomach and again it can aid constipation and uncomfortableness and things like that. So yeah, at least make sure that you're food free for two hours but keep the you know fluids coming in. The next one is just to be really mindful when you're eating. Just try and make smarter choices, try and be really intentional with your food. Listen to your body and a fun fact is it takes 20 minutes for your stomach to tell your brain that you're full. So yeah, that, that's really interesting because if you eat really quickly and you sort of have all that food, you might find in a few minutes time that you feel really bloated and you think, God, how do I manage that? How did I not realise that I'm so uncomfortably full? Whereas that's because our brain doesn't get informed straight away when we're full. So we're eating, eating, eating and then we get to a point where we feel just so uncomfortable and that we've overeaten. Um, so yeah, just try and be really mindful, listen to your body, be in tune with your body. And another thing that I like to do, and this was a tip my dad has always told us, uh, is stop eating just before you get full. Like before you start feeling uncomfortably full, even if you could finish what's on your plate, think about, am I full? Am I eating this because it's on my plate or am I eating it because I want more food? And that's super interesting when you think about that and you think, you know what, I could stop here and I'd be absolutely fine and you might have a quarter of your dinner left. I'm not saying make a habit of going hungry, that is not what I'm saying, but what I am saying is just before you get full, perhaps um, consider leaving it and coming back to it if you are hungry, 
obviously make sure it's not two hours before sleep um but yeah just have a think and it's really about listening to your body making smarter choices being much more intentional with your eating and yeah it's just super interesting so do make sure that you, you take that into consideration Another thing about portion control, I mean it's so hard isn't it, especially when you're not used to doing it, especially when you come from a family like mine that are typically feeders and it's a cultural thing and just stacking up the plate is just what we do and everything is done around food and eating and it can be hard. I mean I go around to my parents house and they're putting layer on layer on my plate and I'm just like I'm just not going to stomach that whereas as a child I was conditioned to be eating those amounts so yeah, it's really interesting, but I think a massive part of portion control is learn, and it's what you're used to in your lifestyle, and also mental health can impact portion control. Stress hormones make us hungry, stress hormones make us eat more, because it's all linked to comfort eating and binge eating. Your body craves that as something, and we try to eat our feelings away as opposed to actually dealing with what we're, what we're faced with, um, because obviously food, especially things like chocolate, can release endorphins and sugar, and it makes you feel temporarily like things are okay, and then you sort of come back down again and you think, oh no, because you've not actually dealt with the actual issue as to why you're overeating. So yeah, mental health can take can play a massive part in portion control. Again, be more mindful, have a think about things, um, and it's just super important to take care of the mental health. Stay away from trigger foods, that's really important. So foods that you know are gonna trigger you to make unhealthy choices are going to trigger you to eat more of them. Sugars, salt, so just be careful of trigger food. If you know that you can't have a burger without having the french fries as well, maybe, you know, think about that burger. Think about if it's essential. Think about whether it's in line with what you want to achieve. And just, again, be more intentional, but take care of that mental health. Um, it's very, very important because especially things like stress, being overtired, overworked, um, it really can lead you to be a little more lax on your portion control. And that's kind of a downward spiral to be honest with you. The next one is to eat slower and chew your food properly. This is not just for the fact that I mentioned that your body and brain need time to connect and time to be in tune with one another to know when you're full, but also it takes longer to digest food that hasn't been chewed up properly. So if you think about it, if you chew your food really well, it's going to go through the body and really easily digested. Whereas if you're talking a lot and getting a lot of air mixed in with it and also you're not chewing it properly, your body is going to have a harder time digesting it and it's likely just to stay in clumps and yeah, I, I, there's a whole science behind it but to be honest with you, I know for a fact that chewing your food properly is really important for feeling full, for digestion, for metabolism, constipation, all of these things that again will impact your weight, your maintenance and your overall health and how your body is running. So. Yeah, just give your stomach time and give it a, an easier job. Just take time in chewing your food, enjoy your food, and yeah, that's definitely um, a tip to consider. The next one is more about practical, actual tips that you guys can do to aid portion control. So if you're the kind of person that likes a full plate, um, think about what you're putting on your plate. Think about, okay, I have my, let's say a burger here or my slice of pizza. How can I fill the rest of this plate with smarter choices? vegetables, um, things that are really good for you, um, just things that you like but also that are better than having perhaps the chips on there, the coleslaw, things like that, the onion rings. Um, again, it's all about being intentional and having a little bit of a think. If you like to eat a lot of food, if you're conditioned like I was for a really long time to have a full plate and eat everything on that plate, try filling it things that are a bit more friendly to you and things that are going to digest well and that are going to be less of the trigger foods that I mentioned earlier. And another really great thing you can do is just buy smaller plates. Um, when I started on my weight loss journey, I was looking at my plates and they were huge and I was filling them up with food because obviously you want to fill up your plate. It looks weird if a plate has like loads of sparse areas on it. You kind of think that you've not done enough or it's not that, doesn't look great. So what I did is I went out and bought a smaller plate and the difference it makes and for the mental side of things as well, you, you feel full because you've finished everything on that plate. So buy smaller plates. It might seem simple and really tedious, but actually it really does work. The next one is to be aware of things that again trigger you and I mentioned this before but things like alcohol um, if you can limit out alcohol as much as you can especially if you're trying to lose weight that will really help you I get asked a lot of questions about alcohol personally I don't drink very often I might have a glass of wine or champagne on New Year's same on my birthday and I might have a glass of wine with Christmas dinner if I'm not driving Andrew and I alternate it every year but I don't ever 
get drunk because I don't drink enough to do that. So they say that when you're drunk, and obviously I know from being drunk in the past, that it does release your inhibitions and it does make you less mindful, of course. So that's a time when you're going to eat more. Obviously as well, when you wake up hungover, you're craving salty food, you're craving comfort food, you're craving junk food. So alcohol can be a massive trigger. I'm not saying cut it out of your life, but what I am saying is be mindful of it. Prioritise what you think is important. I'm not saying don't have a drink. Everybody is, you know, free to do what they want to do. But personally, I don't really drink that often. And I think that's been a massive key in the success that I've had. Um, so yeah, just have a think about that. Have a think about your lifestyle and what you want to achieve. The next one is to keep a food diary or to track your food consistently. So if you're like me and you're on WW, you might do this via the app. And it's a super easy way for a lot of people to track food, weight, habits and everything like that. But if you don't, have some kind of a diary, have some kind of place you can record your food, what you've eaten, and just have a food diary. And not only does this make you mindful of what you've actually eaten, it's more about food forecasting, it's more about knowing what your body is doing, how your body is responding to certain foods, look for traits in your weight, I ate this and I lost weight but I ate that and I gained, or that I ate a lot of salty food that week, it didn't, it didn't sit well with me. So it's a great learning for all around just to keep some kind of food diary or journal, or again if you have the app you can track. And then the last one which is super important as well and one that again can impact so many different things, not just food but also your mind, your happiness, your well-being and that is to get enough sleep. Sleep. A lack of sleep can make you crave sugar and it can make you crave carbs. It makes your body feel like you need something and when your body is telling you you need something, the first thing we tend to do is give ourselves food, give ourselves sugar, like energy drinks, things like that, a cupcake because we're feeling a bit run down or just to make ourselves feel better. But again, nine times out of ten is because your body needs something else or you might be tired or you might be stressed or run down you need to get rest at least eight hours a night if you can't do that if you have a baby if you have children i know for myself it's a big ask um but try and get seven hours where you can or at least try and get little mindful moments throughout the day to release um, your stress levels and minimize them as much as you can because it, it will impact your food choices and it will impact a lot and again when you're tired you crave sugar because you need that hit you need that something to give you a boost of energy it's like caffeine so have a think about your lifestyle have a think about what time you're going to bed have a think about how much, re how much rest you're getting sorry and just think about all of these things and they all come together and they are the key to a healthy portion control and weight loss and maintenance. So that is all of the tips I have for you today. Um, again, a lot of them might seem like common sense and a lot of them are, but sometimes it takes someone to tell you to be mindful of these things before actually you stop taking it for granted and you actually start to properly think about it. So I hope that this has helped you all. If you have any tips when it comes to portion control, pop them in the comments box down below because we would all love to hear from you. And also if you're struggling, let us know and we can kind of put our arm around you, give you a bit of support, let you know that you're not alone, we're here for you. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new to see more WW content from me along with vlogs, along with foodie recipe videos and beauty and fashion. I would love to have you here so make sure you say hey and subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!